I'm stuck. I'm stuck on the log. Check that out. <laughs> that log is tall. And I let the bike balance. All right, got a little uh, log crossing practice. That's a pretty big log right over here found in this campground. Gonna go over here and double blip it on the 200. Oh, that was good, but kind of slipped. Slipped over, so we're gonna hit this a little harder. There we go. Tire's a little slick today. You know, I think other people might have complained about vibration because this bike isn't counterbalanced. And while it does vibrate a little bit more than some of the other uh, bikes that are counterbalanced, that is not a reason not to buy this bike because it doesn't vibrate badly. When you're in the single track stuff like this, you're not even thinking about the freaking vibration because you're just thinking about the trail, what's in front of you. And, and you're not worrying about what this bike does. It creates kind of this euphoric um, feeling where you're just man and machine together and uh, the vibration just lets you know that the thing's alive. And so, yeah, what I prefer, I mean, I, I do enjoy the bikes that are a little bit smoother than this one, but um, the vibration doesn't bug me on this bike. I would wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, if you're looking for a change up bike, like seriously guys, if, if I had to choose between this bike and the KTM 150 XCW, I take this bike for sure. This bike is just more fun to me. The, the motor is more versatile. I think, it, I know it has more grunt um, in the low end and it still really sings and has fun up on the top end. So the motor is a freaking high point on this bike and I can live with uh, a little bit of vibration that it has. I know coming up here, there's some fairly rocky terrain. I don't know how well it's gonna be cleared, but it'll be interesting to see how this beta does on it. See if the forks and the shock can absorb things and keep traction going around these switchbacks. And I'm in second gear. Yeah, keep her going, baby. Second gear, feather in the clutch. Look at that little thing. Stay in second. Listen to that sucker grunt. This is a freaking capable bike, guys. I'm gonna punch down to first. Now, get a second again. Stand back up. There's first, punch down into it. Tight switch back. I was against the stops there. Would have liked to have had a little bit more travel. And that's that. I would have liked to have a little bit more um, traction on my rear wheel up that. I might need to take a couple of clicks of compression out, soften up the rear fork and maybe split it speed up the rebound one click. I think that might help up that rocky section we just did, but overall this little sucker did admirable. That climbed up that way better than most of the other bikes that I've taken up, but especially any of the four strokes that I've taken up that little section. 
Okay, just got out of a nasty uh, rocky climb where the bike did really well. And then we opened back up into more of this smooth flowing single track. And this is where I absolutely love this bike. This is right where the sucker was designed to come play on this type of stuff. Oh, slipped there on a root, got the handlebar dumped down into my rib cage. Kind of knocked the wind out of me just a little bit. Blaming that on the slick conditions. We're up at elevation. And uh, bike still runs really good, has a lot of power. Probably won't be able to come up this high again until next June. So I'm enjoying it right now while it lasts. We're so blessed here in Utah because I'm still riding this freaking awesome sweet mountain single track in November, mid-November, and then, you know, we've been doing desert riding down southern Utah and in central Utah out in the desert. And just the diversity of terrain that we've got, man, it's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm.